Well, we've done it again, people. Once again, we've treated the Earth like a toilet for just long enough to fuck it all up, and now we gotta move to another planet so we can start the whole process all over again. So we head on over to Mars, which has some advantages over the Earth. For one, there's no breathable atmosphere there, so belching pollution into the air is no big deal. Another advantage is that there's none of those awful Earth laws about consumer protection nonsense. So all you have to do as a business person is concentrate on making piles of awesome moolah. Oh, and provide stuff that people need to improve their lives, blah 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 blah. This is Off-World Trading Company. I tried this game out because I wanted to try some early access games that were by some of the larger, more established studios. I wanted to see if they were bringing any decent games out, frankly, and Stardock has made some of my favorite games. Uh, Galactic Civilization, Sins of a Solar Empire, and the Fallen Enchantress games are really amazing. So I was wondering how Stardock was using early access, and if it was any good or not. At first look, off-world trading company looks like any other RTS really. It has a skirmish and campaign play and some pretty standard tutorials to get you started with all of it. However, I really hesitate to call off-world trading company an RTS in a traditional sense. It's a business competition game that kind of uses an RTS-like template. You pick one of several corporations to play and scan around the map looking for a suitable place to set up your base. These resources you find are important because you'll need them to set up a manufacturing infrastructure and be able to sell goods to the market and make money. And making money is the primary goal of this game. The, the goal of each game is to buy out the competition that's on the map to essentially get rid of them, you'll control them. And that requires money. During the campaign, which I'm playing in these clips, you have to get an exclusive trade deal with the colony that's on each map. And you get that deal by being the corporation to build the most expansions to the colony in a given number of days. And as you probably guessed, building those requires money. I say that because it's really tough to lose sight of that because most RTS games encourage you to build constantly, expending resources to build onto your base and build units to attack your opponents and that sort of thing. In Offworld Trading Company, there's a pretty strict limit to the number of hexes you can occupy, which is initially very low but goes up every time you upgrade your base. So the basic gist of the game is that you need to upgrade your base to the maximum as soon as possible, build up an industry on that limited territory that can sell high demand goods to the market so that you can make enough money to fulfill the ultimate goal of the game. The land limitations make it so you'll probably only be able to manufacture one or two of the goods that will bring in high amounts of money. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the market is very dynamic and the actions that you take and the actions that the computer and other players take affect it very highly. This is important to remember because your crew needs air, water, and food. If you can't make those yourself, you can buy what you need from the market automatically and then you'll be running a deficit. The more the other players are buying their food and power and stuff from the market, the higher the price on that stuff will go and the harder it will be for you to make money. Also, the inverse is true. If you make more power, food, water, air, and all that than you actually need, you'll accumulate a surplus that can be sold on the market. In the end game, and this applies to food in particular, it can be going for a very high price and it may become your main money maker. Particularly in the lower difficulty levels where the computer shirks growing food and making air, so all of the players on the map are buying food from the market to feed their people and thus raising the prices. Each faction has its own advantages and quirks. The science faction has advanced versions of everything, so they don't need to build refining buildings for raw materials. The materials are refined in the same buildings that does the mining, so they don't use up as many of their limited hexes to refine raw materials. The robot faction only needs power for their base, so you don't need to build them farms and such. You know, just all that kind of thing. Every faction is very unique. And there's dirty tricks you can play on your opponents, even though there's no direct fighting in the game. You can use an EMP to overload your opponent's buildings, hire pirates to disrupt their material shipments, that sort of stuff. The more advanced things you can do require expensive buildings, but they enable you to do really cool things like manipulate the market. You can make it so that the bottom falls out of a commodity that your opponent is selling a lot of. 
However, the cost of these buildings is such that you'll often have to weigh its advantages with the cost. And there's also research and other things to do, but again, you'll be weighing the cost and the benefit. The more money you spend, the further away you are from your goal. Overall, it's a really fun game and it's easy to learn and easy to play. I really like it. It's really well balanced. Each faction feels really different and unique. Each game session only lasts about 20 minutes or so, making it easy to jump in and just play a game or two. The campaign is really interesting. Like I said before, in each map section you're competing to win an exclusive trade contract with the nearby colony by building up the colony more than your competition. You only have a certain number of days to accomplish this, which is adjustable in the game options. So the cost-benefit analysis of the more powerful, expensive buildings comes into play even more. With only a limited amount of time to build the colony, and the cost increasing with each module you build, you'll have to weigh the cost of the expensive, powerful buildings even more than usual. If you win the map, you'll get bonus money and perks to use in the next map section as you go from section to section across Mars. You also need to buy the services of engineers to unlock certain buildings. All of the more powerful ones will need engineers, as well as certain manufacturing facilities and research buildings. You can hire them for one scenario or the whole rest of the game. Of course, the ones for the whole rest of the game will come more expensive than the ones just for one scenario. This makes the campaign fun and different from a lot of other RTS games I've played. I definitely give Offworld Trading Company a thumbs up. It's very fun and very well made. If you enjoy business simulations, then you really ought to check this one out.